Hey ladies and gents, this is Linda Fitchick 777 and today I'm coming at you with a tutorial for one of my projects uh, from last year. Each year I try to put out uh, some ideas for Christmas Craft Bazaar projects and last year I had a couple of people wanting to know how to make these Santa hats on a candlestick um, and so I'm going to give you the tutorial on how to do that. There's a couple of options with making this hat um, or doing this hat and I will go over that with you. I will show you how to get it put together and then if you know time moving forward it's pretty darn easy we'll decorate one. So these hats um, they are they're stiff, okay? Um, this is stuffed as well, but they are stiff. There's no stuffing in this top. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, there's a couple of ways to get these Santa hats. Of course, you can buy, which last year I did, I bought red felt. I cut out a couple of triangle pieces, um, sewed it together, uh, leaving the bottom end open. Okay, so you've got a triangle piece. You're going to sew it from the top to the bottom. All right, and then I had just like some white felt, and I added that to the bottom rim of the hat, just like a Santa hat, okay? That's definitely an option to do. However, at the end of Christmas last year, when everything goes on sale, of course, uh, Walmart had their Christmas hats, and it was down to like 90% off, wasn't much left, but not everybody wants Santa hats. I got them for like 10 cents a piece, and you can't beat that price. Um, if you buy felt, you know, and to make about four or five of them, you know, maybe a yard of red uh, felt and maybe a half a yard of white felt. But in that case, that's still about four dollars probably for that. Um, into four hats, that's about a dollar per hat. But the way I did it last year and was able to get the hat on clearance, ten cents a hat. You can't beat that. So what I did this year, let me show you. Okay, these Santa hats are uh, a little bit big, okay? The first thing you need to do is you're going to need to take, because what I did with mine is I made them for like a rustic uh, kind of Santa hat, okay? So the first thing you're going to do need to do is get off the fluffy ball on the end, okay? Save it for something else. You should be able to just kind of, um, you know, some of them they're easy to pull off or just cut it off. However you can do. It's okay if you cut the hat on the end because that can be fixed. This is great uh, idea, especially too, um, for those of you who aren't really sewers. Okay, you don't have to mess with it. The hat's kind of done for you. Um, if you aren't a sewer, then I would probably skip the step I'm doing right now. But, you know, your hat's going to be just a little bit big, but that's okay. All right? Um, so you can leave it as is, but definitely take that ball off, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is I lobbed, cut, lobbed, cut my hats off right about the tip of that white um, um, thing there. Now all of a sudden I don't know what that's called. I cut it off right about the top of that brim, let's call it, okay? But save that. Okay, that's just a nice, perfect little size for what I did. And then this brim part, go ahead and you need to save that. Or if you have some other, um, you know, white felt, you can use it. But otherwise, save that brim. Cut that white off of that um, red felt that's left. Just kind of go right above that stitch line there. That'll be perfectly fine. It's big enough right up above that. Cut that off. Okay, almost there. These were super cute. They just sold out like lickety split last year, okay? Um, throw that away. You don't need it. So you're left with this, okay? This will have to be shortened because since we cut that edge off, see how much bigger that is? That's no longer going to fit. So keep that in mind. But you don't need this anymore, okay? Um, now, if you'll notice on this hat, I have a curve on the end, okay? Um, we're going to do that. I had to get my train of thought. So turn your hat inside out. 
all the way up at that point. If you accidentally, like when you were taking that uh, poof ball off at the end and you accidentally cut a hole on that, just go ahead and fix that. Let me come back around. You accidentally, um, you know, cut a hole at the top of your hat there. I wanted to actually bring it back around because I wanted to see something here real quick. One moment, please. Yeah, because that's kind of hard. We're going to actually just kind of take that off. Okay. I'm a sewer. You don't have to if you're not a, a, a sewer. Just, you know, um, what's the word I want to say? If you're not a sewer, when you get your hat all nice and stiff and you go to pop this back out, just don't pop it back out all the way. Pop it out so that that white doesn't show. So here's what I'm saying. You've got it like this inside out and then you're popping it right back out like this. Just kind of pop it to that and be done with it. Because this will be covered because you'll put a bell on the end um, at some process like that. Okay, so just make sure you don't pop that all the way out. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. I was going to go ahead and just kind of cut that off, but don't worry. If you are a sewer and you make a hole because you cut that poof ball off, just, you know, cut the end off and adjust your hat and re-sew the end. Okay, so we're going to make that little crickety spot in there. I would suggest using like a quilting thread. Let me bring this down. Because it's stronger than just a regular thread, okay, quilting thread. Doesn't matter the brand. Doesn't really matter the color. It's not going to be seen. Cut off a nice chunk here. You have to do this um, if you want that cute little wrinkled look at the end. Even if you're not a sewer, you'll want to do this spot. Okay, and bring the two threads together. I'm going to bring them both together and tie a knot in the end. One thing about quilter's thread, it's kind of hard to work with because it's so stiff, but it's perfect because it's a lot stronger than regular all cotton thread. Okay, it's kind of like a polyester, I think. Don't shoot me if I'm wrong, my sewers, but I think it's like a polyester. Oh, it's a glazed cotton. Hmm, I did not know that. Well, it's very strong. Almost like nylon type polyester thread, but it's some kind of cotton. Okay, make a hole at the end, or a hole, oh my gosh, a knot at the end. Okay, and then what you want to do is right at the very tip top of your hat, you want to come in and try to do it along the line where it's already sewn, okay? So I'm just using a brown thread. It doesn't really matter if you're kind of on that line where it's already sewn. You're not going to see it anyway. So come at the very tip top of the hat where it's sewn, okay? Let me bring this down a little bit. Camera down to, there we go, the light. Right at the tip top where it's sewn, bring your needle and thread up through that tip top. And then what you're going to do is about a quarter inch apart you're going to just sew probably about four or five inches down on your hat okay so you've got brought your thread through you're gonna go back through to the other side if you're a beginner back through the other side go about a quarter inch down back through the other side and bring your needle through that fabric okay and then you're gonna go about a quarter inch away again and you're going to come back through the other side. I flipped my fabric over, come back through the other side and make another little stitch, okay? Flip your fabric over again, come back through here, make another little stitch, just about a quarter inch apart, okay? Turn your fabric over, down about a quarter inch, take your needle through, pull that thread through, okay? Flip it back over. Those of you that know how to sew, this is just kind of a gathering stitch of sorts. Um, go ahead and do that process, just a little gathering stitch. Flip it back over. Okay, flip it back over. Pulling it through, back over again. Pulling it through, back over. Like I said, about four inches, four or five inches here. Back over. And over. 
Okay, just keep repeating that process. Just a little ways to go here. I'm not going to keep flipping back and forth. I think you got the gist of it. Go one more. Okay. Leave your needle on your... Uh, actually, I'm going to go one more. I'm going to go down a little further. Okay. Let's see. I think that'll work. Leave your needle on your thread. Okay, I'm going to bring this back up. Camera back up. There we go. Leave your needle on your thread. And what we're going to do, a gathering stitch, just take your thread and hold it. Kind of hold your hat and begin to pull on that thread. Both at the same time, pull. And when you pull, it's going to pull and gather all that thread and pull your hat into a little circle. Okay? And actually, I think I'm going to go just a little bit more. I'm going to go a couple, two or three more stitches. One, two, there we go. Pull it down, pull it nice and tight, just like that. And then once you got the amount of curl that you want in your hat, we're going to go ahead and kind of set that. And here's why I say use the quilting thread. Okay, what you're going to do is, because it's stronger for, and it will hold this gathering stitch. Um, advanced sewers, you all know you can do this on your machine, okay? Nice and easy, we all know how to do that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and kind of knot this and hold it in place. So just the where your thread is up this way, let me bring my camera back down so it's closer and in the light. Where your thread is up above here, bring your needle over and around to the other side, okay? And then bring your needle back up through, kind of in the same spot as that stitch, okay? Bring it back up through, just like this, and we're going to just secure that, okay? And we're going to do that a couple of times. Bring your needle and thread back around. Okay, we're just holding that in place, securing the stitch. Okay, now this last little loop, about the third time around, take your needle and thread and put it through that loop once. Go back around through that loop twice. Back around through that loop a third time and then just pull it tight. We're just making a nice little knot, okay? And then cut off the excess. All right, it doesn't matter. You can leave those little strings, okay? And then bring my camera back out. We're going to take our hat and we're going to flip it around again to the other side. And yes, sometimes I do all that and I turn around and that thread breaks, even with the quilting thread, but you have better odds. Okay, so then you might have to repeat the process if it breaks. And we have a nice little curved edge there, okay? Nice cute little curved edge on, and you see how I kind of didn't pull that point all the way out because that cotton's on there, so just leave it like that. Nice cute little curved edge. But you can see the difference of how floppy this hat is as compared to how stiff this is. And yes, it's a little bit of stuffing, but here's not, and it's still really stiff, okay? So now we need to put this back on, okay? So we need to cut right next to that seam. Okay, and what you're going to do is kind of measure how big you're going to need it. Measure here at the seam, back around, kind of wrap it around that hat, see how big you need it. Bring it over here. you got to get this back on, so right about there. So we're going to cut off probably about three or four inches there, okay? And then what you're going to need to do, either by hand or with your sewing machine, is you need to sew that edge. Okay, so either by hand or with your sewing machine, I've made this cuff shorter, this brim, and I've sewed it. So now what you're going to need to do is attach it back to your hat, okay? So what I do is I go on the inside. You want the out, the right side intact okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put the right side we're going to pin the right side for those of you who aren't sewers right side means the right side you're looking at it is the finished side the wrong side means the side where it's all the stitching and everything turned over the ugly side okay so you want your right side facing you facing out you're going to put the right side next to the wrong side of the hat make sure you have the nice sewn edge down so you want the 
rough edge of the brim next to at the top so the un or the cut edge next to the cut edge of that hat okay right side of the brim next to the wrong side of that hat okay so just like this and then we're going to pin it okay all the way around Make a little bit of pinning done just like that we're going to pin those cut edges together the right side next to the wrong side okay I'll be back with it pinned okay I've got it all pinned so now you need to either proceed to sew it by hand or with your sewing machine right at that cut edge okay so I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back okay I've got that all sewn so when you're done by putting the wrong right side against the wrong side of the hat now you should be able to just kind of flip it over and up and then you've got that nice right side showing just like the brim should be okay so now here's our next process before we can move any further we've got to stiffen the hat right so here's what you do you're gonna need a nice large bag this is like a two gallon bag okay you're gonna need um, I used I believe two bottles of glue for um, I did four hats because it goes pretty quick um, and I had done five of another thing and I think I used about four bottles all together but probably two bottles of glue for about four hats so one bottle of glue two hats you're gonna take all your glue I'm gonna go ahead and do it okay it doesn't matter what brand or anything buy the cheapest glue you can find I think I got this at uh, Walmart it happened to be on sale during the school stuff and it was down to like um, you know 34 cents or something Dollar Tree has them you know two in a pack for a dollar but anyway open your bag and pour that whole bottle of glue inside okay just dump it all in there we're gonna kinda make you could use Mod Podge um, but it's kind of expensive and this takes a lot of glue okay so I mean if you have Mod Podge on hand great but um, this is a little bit cheaper way to do it okay so dump it all in there get it all out of that bottle and then what I do is I just fill this uh, bottle up about mm, two and a half times so it's four ounces so I just fill it up with water I've got a little thing here so we're gonna need about 12 ounces of water or so it's no rhyme or reason just I mean it's not exact measurements I just dump in and I kind of know uh, that it works so it's it's not any recipe or anything like that so this bottle of glue is four ounces so about like I said 12 ounces of water okay and doing this it does take a lot of um, glue and it gets pretty sticky so all right got the glue in the bag okay I would kind of close the top a little bit all right or all the way and then what you're gonna do is mix up that water just kind of squishing the bag at the bottom you're gonna mix up that water and that glue okay get a nice good mix out of it like I said this is a two gallon bag one um, or you can go ahead and do two bottles of glue if you know you're gonna be doing a lot of hats but I just do one bottle at a time okay mix it up really nice since we're doing hats and we have white on here I would suggest not putting any type of coloring in this particular bag okay when I do like my frosty hats they're already dark I go ahead and put like a, a instant coffee in the mix a little I dump a little packet of instant coffee in there and make this like a really dark brown and I dump like my black felt when I'm working with black hats and I put the black felt in there and mix it up that's okay um, but since you have white I would just suggest it's just plain old glue and water okay and then what you're gonna do I definitely would suggest um, some type of like gloves you can buy rubber gloves at like Dollar Tree um, or these um, these are non latex but some type of you know gloves because it's gonna get sticky open this up I would do one hat at a time put this hat in there okay roll it around in there it's gonna get kinda gross you can close the bag if you want you can close the bag and squish it this way works perfectly fine I choose to just get my hands all in it okay saturate that hat okay and then 
Get it all saturated. Now you want to go and wring it all out, okay? Get it saturated and wring that sucker out, okay? This is where it takes a lot of this glue stuff. Okay? Out as good as you can, okay? So it takes up a little bit of that glue. You can probably get a couple, two, three more hats, two hats maybe out of it, maybe three. Okay, so now we have this kind of saturated hat, okay? So the next process, I'm going to go ahead and take off my gloves. The next process that needs to happen is to get our hat stiff, we have to bake it. Yes, you heard me right. We're going to bake it in the oven. You're going to set your oven at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? 250 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? Then what you're going to do is... You need to get like, just get some cheap tin foil. I usually do like two hats at a time, okay? Get some cheap tin foil, all right? You're gonna lay your hat on the tin foil like this. Now, you can't bake it like this or when you pull it out, it's gonna be flat, right? So get your hat on there and then you're gonna make some just real loose tin foil balls, okay? I think I went and I bought like one um, at Dollar Tree, the, just the really thin um, tin foil, okay? And then what you're going to do, and that work, and one was just enough because you can reuse the balls if you're baking two hats at a time. Take your loose tin foiled balls and kind of shove them up into your hat. You're not going to get clear to the end, that's okay. Shove them up into the hat, okay? out like this okay see how I have them kind of shoved in there and they're not going to be perfectly round that's okay just get them as good as you can all right I just do it about like that like I said I bake two at a time so I've got two hats sitting on here like this and then you're going to bake it like I said 250 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for about 20 minutes okay at the end of 20 minutes you're going to come and you're going to flip it okay and then bake it about another 20 minutes okay that's all you need now when you go to bake this and you the first time and then you flip it over you might notice some um, not burn spots but some stiff spots from the glue okay so let me show you on this one see these let me bring my camera down into the light see these that's from the glue they're really stiff can you hear that they're just stiff spots um, from laying down in the heat and it um, browns, I guess. The glue kind of browns on that tin foil, okay? See right there? That's just from the glue browning. I don't mind that at all. It doesn't bother me, okay? So, um, but definitely you want to bake it on one side for about 20 minutes, turn around, come flip it over another 20 minutes, and then pull it out of the oven and let it just sit. It may still uh, feel a little bit soft. It might not quite be all the way dry. That is okay, because now what you're going to do is um, get your process and your hat, and you're just going to set it upright. You can, by this time, you can take the balls out, but I'm going to leave them in there for now because we're dealing with this, and I want it to be stiff. Once you pull it out of the oven, sit it upright, take your uh, um, tin foil balls out so that you can use them on some other hats and start the process baking on that, and then let it sit up and sit overnight. So in the morning, all stiff, it's going to be ready to go. Let me show you another one of uh, the hats I did. Same process. Remember I was talking about the black felt? This is one of the hats I did. It is completely stiff. When I took it out, it wasn't quite dry. It was still almost felt a slightly damp, but that's okay because I let it set up overnight and just sit there. And see, I let it kind of cave in and stuff as I let it, you know, I put it up and sat overnight. It was caved in a little bit. I wanted that process, but... It is completely stiff. There's no stuffing in the inside of this one. Okay? It is stiff. All right? And so once it's completely stiff, now we're to this process. Let me grab it. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, if you want this stiff, like stiff, stiff, like the black hat, add less water. Okay? I think the black hats, um, I did the one four-ounce bottle of glue, and then I did about... 
uh, six to seven ounces of water, whereas these ones we did a bottle of glue and about 12 ounces of water. Okay, so half the water you'll get really stiff. Okay, but these ones I knew I was stuffing, um, so I used a little bit less water and that's okay. Now you'll see on this one too, you can kind of see those little burn spots where it was laying down. Like I said, that doesn't bother me, okay? If you don't really want those burn spots, then I would go in where I said bake it like 20 minutes and turn it and flip it 20 minutes. Maybe go in about every 10 minutes and flip it, okay? Because so that's a total of about 40 minutes. So about every 10, 15 minutes or so, flip it and you might not get those uh, little brown spots, okay? And they're not burnt spots, but they're little brown spots okay so the next thing I want to do is on the hat um, I like my brim a little bit fluffy so I have these wire brushes I got it from Dollar Tree um, it came in a pack of three they're wire brushes so I just come in and I take it and I basically brush that felt okay and it's gonna get a little bit fluffier see kind of that fluffy look that's all I did to it okay then um, because I had the white uh, felt on there, as I said, remember we didn't put any kind of instant coffee or coloring into that glue mixture. So, but I still wanted a little bit of a distress on the hat. So, what I have here, um, and I've showed it on other videos, is I just this is just water, no rhyme or reason. I just dumped hot water when I did it, and then I added some instant coffee. You can get these at Walmart, or I think Dollar Tree has them, just some instant coffee, and I opened a couple of tubes of instant coffee, uh, melted it in some warm water, and then I took a uh, thing of cinnamon, and I just dumped in some cinnamon. No measurements, I just did like two packages of the coffee, dumped in some cinnamon, and I mixed it up, okay? So it gives me that nice, uh, dark look to this water. And so then what I did is I came along once this was all dry into the water and with the cinnamon since you have the cinnamon see so you get that cinnamon on that brush and that's what's going to kind of give us a little bit of a nice look on the hat um, okay so dunk it around in there get, make sure you get some cinnamon on that brush okay and then yeah just kind of wring it out a little bit you don't want it saturated you're going to get your hat all wet again our thing here is just to add a little bit of staining so to speak on the hat okay kind of wring your brush out and come back through and then just kind of glide it on your hat a little bit okay glide it on the hat and if you have any kind of brown spots from the baking this is going to help kind of blend that in like it was just all done on purpose Okay, and so you can see how see how I've just the kind of the wet look there just a little bit. It's pretty much like a dry brush over the top. And then I like to come down and I do just a little bit, just a little bit, or it's gonna look kind of gross, just a little bit on the brim of the hat. Okay? Otherwise it's gonna look gross if you do too much. So just a little bit. I don't even know if you can see that. Let me bring this down into the light just a little bit okay just see a little bit of that brown going on there hope you can see that okay but definitely I know you can kind of see the wet that'll all dry since it's dry brush you can actually go along kind of rub it with your fingers get your hat all going good get that little bit of brown on there just really lightly on that white because your hat's gonna look dirty and you don't want this to be white stark white you know brim so you just want a little bit on there just to kind of um, complement the hat a little bit and it'll look like you know Santa's been down a few chimneys all the chimneys aren't very clean okay so we just want just a little bit of that staining on there so it looks just kind of nice and a nice used little Santa hat okay and let that sit once it's all dry then we're going to go in and just kind of stuff the hat, okay? I buy, like, those pillows, sleeping pillows at Walmart. Um, they run about $5. Let me show you here. I shared this last year, but I buy it. They run about $5, $5.88 a pillow. I open it up, and I use the stuffing, okay? Cheap, cheap, cheap stuffing, all right? There's even pillows for, like, $2.50 if you don't need that much stuffing. Buy a pillow, cut it open, use the stuffing in there. It's going to be a lot less than what they try to charge you in the craft section. Okay, and then so let's stuff our hat. I, you want a little bit up in that point, not too much, but just a little bit up in that point to kind of hold that open. And then just kind of stuff the rest of the hat. Okay, 
stuff at night just like that and leave just maybe about a half an inch or so or not a half an inch about an inch and a half from the top with no stuffing okay stuff our hat perfect now what you need to do get a plate or a lid or something and kind of measure the inside of that hat what I have is one of these do we all remember these from like high school um, and it kind of makes the circle for you okay so what I did is I just kind of measured the center of my hat and then I kind of how far out I needed to go and I drew a circle on some cardboard I actually had cardboard that was white on one side so that worked perfectly you're gonna set that cut that circle out once you've drawn it set that inside and you're gonna glue that circle in okay I use just like Fabri-Tac and I glue that circle in okay I just add glue kind of right on the edge of that cardboard and stuff it in there about an inch down okay once you get that in there and get a couple sides done you can just bring your glue kind of right up against the side of that cardboard while it's in there because if you put it all on the edge of that cardboard and then shove that cardboard in your hat that glue is gonna rub all up through here trust me I've done it so get a little bit in there and get it glued in and then just go down the side and glue this into your hat down the side right on the edge of that cardboard piece add your glue and glue your hat in okay we've got our cardboard circle glued in there's the reason for the cardboard circle because remember I put it on a candlestick holder right so these are just wood candlestick holders you can find them at craft stores or I have found them you know garage sales or whatever and then I just paint them white and I distress them a little bit with some sandpaper uh, the candlesticks now will usually have a metal insert at the top okay these little metal inserts in at the top where the candles make sure you pull those out because those stand up above the lip and it makes it kind of hard for gluing okay so make sure you pull the little metal inserts out of the top of the candlesticks all right and then what I do is I take the candlestick and I glue it to a piece of wood now mine has a shape because all I did was out of my stash a real thin piece of wood you can buy packages of wood circles or wood squares really thin at like Hobby Lobby Walmart has wood shapes decorative shapes that you can paint just buy whatever you know hearts or whatever and just because this is a thin area at the top of the candlestick and we want a little bit more gluing surface to glue to this hat so whatever you can find a wood circle a heart a square whatever these were just in my stash so I used them I used E6000 glue to glue the top of the candlestick to that heart or to that shape I was thinking of a heart to that wood shape okay and then what I'll do is put E6000 on the top of this here and I'll glue it to the center of the bottom of that uh, hat right to that cardboard okay so you glue it to the center of that and then just let it sit overnight okay you're probably gonna have to glue this part first let it sit a couple of hours at least and then glue this part boom set it upright and let it sit overnight okay let it get nice and hard see here's the one I did for this one is I just had a little scallop square or rectangle a piece of wood so that's what I used glued it let it sit up overnight so this will give it more stability and more gluing surface okay last thing we need to do before any decoration is we want to put our bell on okay you can use any bells these are bells from Dollar Tree you can get silver bells if you want them to look a little bit rustic you can paint them mine is painted I've showed this before I'm gonna show it again I have this paint by Viva it's called rusty paper it was given to me you're gonna have to google it if you want to find it it's basically a red looking paint and it's got texture in it like sand okay and it's really thick and so I paint my bells with it and then when it dries it turns this nice real pretty dark brown rustic color okay you could probably get like um, some try to find like a rust color acrylic paint um, you know at the craft stores or at Walmart you can add some sand to it like actual craft sand Dollar Tree has craft sand um, and mix it and make it real um, 
thick with the sand so it gives you this texture to it. You can buy like dark brown uh, spray paint that has a sand in it and you can spray it. It might not be like this rustic color but get as close as you can to it, okay? So we want to attach this bell to our hat, okay? So what we're going to do is just sew it a little bit onto the tip of the hat and then we're going to glue uh, the remainder of it, but we're going to not just rely on the glue, okay? So it's not going to be seen. So uh, doesn't I'm just using a dark brown thread again, just like we did when we did the sewing in that first hat, that gathering stitch. I'm going to take this, and what we're going to do is we're going to glue this bell to the end of the hat. But see how the point comes, and then if we glue the bell to the end. That doesn't, it, that's too wobbly of a surface, whether we sew it or not. So what we're going to end up doing, first we're going to uh, sew it first, but once, what we're going to do is take the tip and you're going to push that tip in, okay, so it looks kind of like that, okay? That's what we're going to do in a minute, but I wanted to show you first what it looks like. So what we're going to do is just add a few stitches to this bell, okay? So get your, it's going to be hard because we stiffened our hat. I kind of push my needle through and then push it on the ground, okay? And then we're going to, that knot and everything's going to be hid once we squish that top in. And let's do just a couple of stitches on this bell, okay? Let's bring it through again, same spot. We're going to just do two or three rounds of that, okay? just to give us a little bit more security. Pulling it through, maybe one more time. Pulling it through the hat, just a couple stitches, okay. All right, and let's knot that off. Three times through the loop, like I showed you the very beginning. Okay, there we go. That's just a little extra added security. Now, our bell's kind of hanging to the side. That's perfect. We're going to go in with our tip of our scissors, and we're going to push that little dent in, just like we did a little bit ago, just like I showed you. But see, now you know why I showed you it right at the beginning. Because <laughs> it's going to be hard to see with the thread and everything now in the way. Okay, push that little divot in, just like that. You can kind of see it. And now we're going to use our Fabri-Tac glue, and we're going to glue both sides of that fat. We're going to glue right around that little ridge, and we're going to glue it to our bell. Okay. Glue right on that edge. A little bit inside there, too. We're a little bit inside the divot. Right there. Okay. Sorry, had to go out of view for a minute. Okay, we've got it right on there, and then we're going to take our bell, put it right up against that, and we're going to hold that. And try to do as nice as you can, not too much mess. If you see any glue sticking out, get your fingernail or get that needle and kind of wipe up that excess of that glue. And just hold it there for a couple of minutes and let it bond. Just kind of pinch, just kind of pinch that to the edge just like that. Okay, so okay, we've got our bell now glued onto this. So now the next thing I'll do, like I said, is I'm going to go ahead and glue this to the candlestick with that E6000 glue, and I'm going to let it sit overnight. And again, um, this is the glue I used, Fabri-Tac, Beacon Fabri-Tac. You can get it at Walmart. It's about $10 a bottle which is good without a coupon. It's like $9.97. Hobby Lobby has it for $11.99. I think Michael's and Joann's has it more, but if you use the 40% off coupon, you get it for about 6 bucks. But I know our Michael's carries the 4-ounce jars um, and then the 8-ounce uh, bottles, not jars. So Fabri-Tac works awesome. Okay, so this is a glue that I recommend for it. Okay, so we have that on there, and now we get to begin decorating. So here I am with my candlestick hat on a candlestick looking awesome and we get to decorate. Okay, I've got just several picks here that I, you know, cut apart as I showed you in a lot of pr of my previous videos uh, when we're doing Christmas Bazaar things. Uh, most of these picks came from Hobby Lobby. Okay, got just some great looking kind of rustic winter 
uh, picks that we're going to put on here. I'm kind of making this um, design kind of be a little bit, not squarely on the front, but just slightly to the side a little bit. So we're just getting things all ready in here. Okay, just be gluing. We just want it to look nice and full and kind of rustic looking. I love to use kind of wintry, snowy looking picks like this. I think they look great. But, you know, use what you like. Just kind of hot gluing to the side here. And what's great about having this nice brim down here is it can kind of hide a little bit of this mess of hot glue that we're doing and kind of feel like it's nice one unit and you know all kind of tucked in and and pretty using a lot of the normal picks I use I love these like beaded kind of berries I think those are awesome I love the color of them and definitely Hobby Lobby has a lot of choices of things that can be used so we're just kind of moving things around. And don't worry, all my little hot glues will get covered up. Okay, and what I like to do to kind of cover up some of you can see hot glues and stuff in here. What I like to do to kind of cover things up like that is use like little pine cones and things, which these I get out of my yard but you certainly can buy pine cones and stuff, but I like to put those in there because it just kind of fills gaps and covers up areas of hot glue and mess. I've got a couple different twines here we're going to use. I've got a nice little brown twine we're going to put on there. I've also got a red twine that I got from uh, Dollar Tree. I've made these little tags just off my computer. It says Believe in the Magic of Christmas. So we're going to add kind of a couple of different twines right here. Okay. And we're going to add this one right up above it a little bit. Just giving it that nice rustic feel, giving it a little bit of color with the red kind of matching in with the Santa hat. See, we're looking just beautiful. And when it sits, you can see how it is just off to the side just a little bit. I'm going to add in, um, again, these are just uh, beaded berries off of a pick. Let me see, I think I'm going to put, yeah, right in there. When I do little single picks like this, when I take them apart off of things, I'll a lot of times just put a little curl in the end just to give it a little, you know, something to put the hot glue on. And then we'll just kind of tuck it right down in here so it's hidden, but you can kind of see it from the front a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add another little pine cone. I'm going to actually move that down a little bit. We're going to put a little pine cone right in there. Gives us a little nice trio of pine cones. That's looking real nice. Look at that. Looking nice and full. That's what I like. Got another one of these little berry picks. Let's see. I think I'm going to put it right up in there. That spot's looking a little bit bare. Right down in there. And then also what I want to do, I think, is add a tiny little pine cone right there as well. I think. Let me look at that again. Yeah, that'll look all right. Let's add a little different pine cone though. There, like that. Now, well, let me see. I've got another pick in here I can squeeze in. Uh, nope, don't like that. Okay, and I've got some candy canes I made out of pipe cleaners. I just twisted red and white around. We're going to kind of tuck these in as well. I'm going to tuck it right, at, move all this stuff and tuck it right down in that brim of that hat there. Look at that, it's going to add a little bit more. I've got some rusty wire um, star garland I got at Hobby Lobby in the mini ornament section. It comes in like a three yard um, 
thing of it and it comes the wire straight and all I did was twist and curl the wire so we're going to add that in as well two more things on here there we go I love this rusty wire garland because you can just twist and move it wherever you need it and then I've got some rusty bells that I have rusted myself I'll put a tutorial out on that had a couple requests for it so I'll make sure the tutorial gets in among this Christmas stuff okay and we're gonna add a little rusty bell right down in here okay there look at that that is just gorgeous okay and I will probably go ahead and add something right down here on the bottom of this base here I've got some more little picks so I will glue that right down here and this and I will probably add a little rusty bell so I'll do that right off camera here because I'm just about on a camera card here a memory card okay so all I did off camera since I have about two minutes remaining on this memory card just added a couple of picks I added a rusty bell and a pine cone just to bring it all up in the same uh, decor as what is up here also I forgot to mention um, uh, not on camera um, on the bottom of this candlestick I felt like it needed just a little more stability so I found this wood shape at Walmart for like 27 cents or something like that so you might want to consider that consider the base of your candlestick if that's what you're using you know Walmart has some great circle shapes and squares wood shapes you could buy in a package I glued this shape to the bottom with E6000 and it just adds a lot more stability uh, for me so like I said you might want to consider that when you're working with these candlestick holders um, I will have the links all down below to all my social media if you'd like to come follow me on Pinterest my blog on Instagram I'd love to have you along if you have any questions about this particular uh, tutorial please leave a comment down below um, if you don't have questions please leave a comment down below I'd love to hear from you give this video a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber to my channel please please come follow me and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell uh, you know so that you are notified immediately when I put out new videos. Um, I will also have any links to any other 2018 Christmas Bazaar video uh, series down below in the information section. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye!